All right, great. Well, thank you all so much for joining us um, <clears throat> for our webinar today on taxpayers with disabilities and families. It's not too late to maximize your 2021 tax credits. And my name is Michael Ross with the National Disability Institute. Before we get started, we are going to go over some housekeeping tips. Next slide, please. Listening to the webinar. The audio for today's meeting can be accessed using computer audio or by calling in by phone. If you select computer audio, please make sure your speakers are turned on or your headphones are plugged in. If you do not have sound capabilities on your computer or prefer to listen by phone, you can dial 1-929-205-6000 and enter meeting code 836-2954-5206. Next slide, please. Real-time captioning is provided during this webinar. The captions can be found by click clicking on the CC button in your Zoom controls at the bottom of the screen. Next slide. Submitting questions. Please use the Q&A box to submit any questions you have during the webinar, and we will direct them accordingly. If your question is not answered during the webinar or you're listening by phone and not logged in, you can send an email to our colleague, Kish Pisani at K, uh, K, excuse me, K -P -I -S -A -N -I at N D I dash inc.org. Next slide, please. Technical assistance. If you experience any technical difficulties during the webinar, please use the chat box to send a message to the NDI host. Um, I think on your screen it will say NDI webinar or could also to Kish Pasani. Um, and you can also email Kish at K P I S A N I at ndi-inc.org. Please note, this webinar is being recorded and the materials will be placed on the National Disability Institute website at nationaldisabilityinstitute.org slash resources slash webinars. Great. Next slide, please. Great. Well, as I mentioned, my name is Michael Rush, and I'm the director of the Center for Disability Inclusive Community Development at the National Disability Institute. Today, we're going to be talking about various tax credits, particularly looking at the child tax credit and the earned income tax credit um, that is available uh, to individuals and making sure that we are maximizing the opportunity. So one, if you haven't filed taxes um, this year or got an extension, or um, if you're looking to um, file uh, and claim uh, the child tax credit, if you haven't claimed that as well, today you're going to be um, learning more about each of those um, two particular credits as well as additional information as well. Next slide, please. Um, I would like to take a moment just to thank our supporter of this webinar, which is to share our strength, um, who are, we are working with to increase the awareness um, to individuals with disabilities about child tax credit and other favorable tax credits, including free tax preparation services. So we greatly appreciate share our strength and their support of this webinar series. Before we turn it over to our guest speaker, we do have two polling questions that we would like to ask um, each of you to um, each of you to answer. So, if um, we can put up the first polling question, right, and then pull up the polling question. Great. So, the first two questions are: um, the first question is, how familiar are you with free? tax preparation services. Are you very familiar? Are you somewhat familiar? Are you, are you not familiar at all? So please take a moment to answer the first question on the screen. 
The second question is, how familiar are you with the child tax credit? Same choices, you're very familiar, you're somewhat familiar, or you're not familiar at all. So please take a moment and answer the question. All right, Ashley, we can go in and close the poll. And great. So it looks like um, about familiar and somewhat familiar um, are familiar with the free tax preparation services and um, uh, looking at the child tax credit as well and it shows that 28% are not familiar and 32% are somewhat familiar. So that's great. So you'll definitely learn more information today on each of those. Next slide. Next slide, please. Great. So we're very fortunate to have a longtime friend of the National Disability Institute, Don Dill, who is a senior tax analyst with the SPEC headquarters of the National Partnership at the Internal Revenue Service, who's going to share uh, information with us today on um, the Internal Revenue Service, on the Stakeholder Partnerships Education and Communication Division, as well on the importance of the various tax credits. So Don, thank you for being with us today and I'll turn it over to you. Michael, thank you so much and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, my pleasure and privilege to be with you this afternoon. Uh, my thanks to Michael and the wonderful team at NDI, as he's mentioned, I've had the privilege and honor of working with them for 15 plus years now and always a great, a great collaboration. So I thank you for this opportunity. So I'm thrilled to know that 40% of you are, are pretty familiar with free tax prep services and um, also with the child tax credit, but I'm hoping here today we'll provide you just a little bit more information and we'll certainly I'm glad to provide the other 60% with more information because uh, as this webinar is so uh, aptly titled, it, it's not too late uh, to get these important tax credits. So I'm excited to be with you today and hopefully we can provide you information, answer questions, and uh, so that you can go back to your communities and those you serve and provide them some more information. So I'll start off on the next slide and I can go right past that one and just go over you what I hope to cover with you today. And first, I wanted to just provide you a little bit of background about where I come from within the IRS. Probably many of you are probably taking a little back that we're going to hear from the IRS, but I'm in the organization that is here to help uh, provide some outreach and education, and I'll give you more information on that. Then we'll go over these critical tax credits, as you see there, the child tax credit, the earned income tax credit and the child of dependent care credit. And I'll try to emphasize in each one of those some individual uh, exceptions, if you will, or, or places where persons with disability need to be aware of some additional opportunities. Then we'll go into some uh, options on how you can help spread the word in your community, in your workplace with those you serve. And then certainly last but not least, we'll uh, go into some additional resources that I hope will be of, of value to you. And then we'll close out with some question and answers. So uh, again, glad to be here. Thank you for your time. And I'll jump right into the next slide. And so, as I said, when, when somebody says they're from the IRS and they're here to help, I know that sounds a little shallow and hollow, but we really are. I work in this unit called SPEC, Stakeholder Partnership Education and Communication. And we really are the outreach uh, and education arm of the entire inter internal revenue service, excuse me. And as you see there, our mission is to assist our taxpayers, which are our customers in satisfying their tax responsibilities and we do that by building and maintaining partnership with key stakeholders, such as our wonderful friends at the National Disability Institute, and then using them to leverage uh, the ability to communicate and educate uh, taxpayers. We have learned very quickly that a message that comes from the National Disability Institute is much more readily accepted by a person with disability than when it comes directly from the IRS. And so, as we like to say, we wanna be a silent partner uh, in this effort. As we go on to the next uh, slide, 
I just wanted to give you a little bit more about what we inspect particularly focus on, although we want to educate all taxpayers, we do have special effort on what we call our target audiences, and those would be low uh, to moderate income taxpayers, and I know that's a wide definition, but we define that within the uh, EITC income thresholds. This year, that's about $57,000 or below. Uh, senior citizens, persons with disabilities, and those with limited English proficiency, uh, which would, of course, and Native Americans. So a uh, very special efforts we try with each of those groups to, to spread the word and provide education where we can. So as I mentioned on the slide before, our, our key in this is, is not only for us to deliver messages, but more importantly, to provide you service providers and, and uh, community organizers and, and folks that work in service oriented positions within your community to give you the message so that you can share them uh, with your community and we hope and we know quite frankly that it will it will go much further when it comes from a trusted organization such as yourself. So on the next slide, I just want to talk briefly uh, uh, again about this that we call this a leverage approach. And as I mentioned in, the, in my onset, we have been privileged and proud to work with the National Disability since, Institute since 2003. And I think that dates some of us, but it just goes to show how strong this partnership has been and, and quite frankly, how productive it is. So we offer our thanks to the National Disability Institute for their leadership over these years. And I'll jump into our next slide. One of the things I didn't really highlight, but I will as we go through the rest of the presentation, one of the probably the biggest program we run out of our organization spec is what we call the VITA and TCE program. Um, of course, IRS, we love acronyms, but they do have names. The VITA stands for the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. TCE sounds for the tax, stands for Tax Counseling for the Elderly Programs. And both of these are longstanding uh, community-led uh, programs that provide free tax services. They both have been in existence now for over 50 years and have served tens of millions of American taxpayers and provided them free high quality tax services. And so we're awfully proud of that work. And I uh, just wanted to let you know, just a, a sign of what our scope is. Last year, and of course, this is kind of with an asterisk. I think we all are used to those asterisks now with the pandemic impacting us. We had about 6,000 free sites in all 50 states and, and Puerto Rico last year. Uh, they were manned by over 60,000 volunteers who are trained, certified by the IRS to provide free tax services. And then just the power of these wonderfully dedicated community volunteers helped prepare over 2.1 million free federal tax returns. And we do try to keep data, and that included nearly 244,000 uh, taxpayers who indicated they were a person with disability. We also provided uh, free state returns for those who needed another 1.4 million. We did it by electronically filing, which is the most uh, safe, effective, and efficient way to file, and I hope all of you are doing that. And there's the most important part. That effort provided over $2.7 billion in federal tax refunds and another 350 million in state refunds. Of all of you that work in this, uh, in the service provided uh, organizations know how hard it is to get people money. There's the probably the biggest amount of money an individual will receive in a year, a low to moderate income individual is during tax time. So it's a critical need and we're, want, we're so thrilled to offer this opportunity and we'll talk more about it uh, when we get to what you can do to help those you serve. So we'll move on to the next slide and we're gonna start here and start talking about these critical tax credits. And so I'll jump down to the next slide. And I know we don't wanna go into a full deep dive on taxes, probably none of you are interested in that except for folks like uh, me who are CPAs by trade and tax accountants by, uh, by career. But I wanted to just distinguish with you two big things you probably hear about a lot of times. There are tax deductions and there are tax credits. So first we're gonna talk about tax deductions. And a tax deduction lowers your taxable income, which is the amount you determine your tax liability. 
So for example, if you had a thousand dollar tax taxable income and a tax rate of 10%, you'd owe a hundred dollars. So when we talk about a tax deduction, what that could do is then lower your taxable income. And as you would imagine, then it will have an incremental savings on your, on your tax liability. So the example I said, if you had a, a tax deduction for home mortgage interest and you reduce that income bracket there by $1,000, you'd save $100, which is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. We all wanna save and pay the least amount we do. So then on the next slide, what I wanted to distinguish for you was what a tax credit is. And we'll go to the next slide. And a tax credit, unlike a tax deduction, provides a dollar for dollar reduction in the total amount of taxes you owe. And now there's two types of tax credits because taxes are complicated. It would never be simple, but we have some tax credits, what we call non-refundable meaning they'll help you reduce your tax liability to zero, but unfortunately you don't get the remainder of the credit. So if I give you a simple example, if you owed $100 in tax and had a $500 non-refundable tax credit, you'd offset the $100, great, you don't owe any money, but you quite frankly lose, if you will, uh, the value of that $400 uh, non-refundable credit. On the other hand, we have refundable tax credits, and those, as you are probably already figuring out, are going to be much more valuable. And so what they do is they reduce your tax credit liability to zero, but importantly, you receive the remaining credit. So if I go back to that same example I gave you, uh, in the first instance, you had a $100 tax liability of $500 uh, tax uh, refundable tax credit, you again would reduce your liability to zero with that first $100. And then the IRS would mail you a check. I would prefer to go direct deposit if you could uh, to expedite it, but we would send you a direct deposit for the remaining $400. So what a valuable opportunity those are. And as we go on to the next slide, what you're gonna find out, we're gonna start talking to you about tax credits that are refundable. So we go to the next slide. I'll start first and foremost with the child tax credit. Uh, as you can imagine, the, the basic requirements for a uh, tax credit uh, in general, when we talk about the child tax credit, you need to have earned income that's wages from employment, or if you own your own business, a Schedule C as we call them in a the tax world. Those are earned income, what you make for a profit from a company or an endeavor like uh, uh, driving an Uber. You would then need to have a taxpayer that qualifies to be a, your child, and they would have to have a, a tax identification number, either an SSN or an ITN. We, of course, would, again, as I said, taxes are complicated, nothing simple. You would have to determine uh, if that child of yours qualified based on your relationship and the age and residency uh, support, whether they have an SSN. And one of the main requirements is that the child's main home must be in the U.S. for more than half a year. So as we go on to the next slide, there were, and I hope you've heard about it, and it sounds like some of you did, and unfortunately some of you didn't, there were major updates for this tax year alone. And I know that's confusing. I'm talking I, on my slide, I talk about 2021. That's the tax year. We are in what we call the filing season 2022. In, the, in this 2022 filing season, you filed your taxes for tax year 2021. And that's the year where Congress made these wonderful and significant changes to the tax credit. So as you see there, the first one is that they in, the, in prior years, and I'll talk reluctantly at the end that unfortunately uh, in the current law, it's gonna revert back to these numbers uh, uh, starting next year, unless uh, additional tax uh, legislation has changed. But the, the initial credit was $2,000. For this year, it's been bumped up to 3,000 if your child or what we call in the tax world dependent is age six through 17. And if their child is below five or five and under, I should say, now it's worth $3,600. So a significant change 
uh, in the amounts. And then you see on the bottom bullet, we've also increased the age from 16 to 17 for this year. So major changes, obviously, if you have a, a number of three children, that's another uh, ages six to 17, that's another $3,000, uh, just to give you an example. And so if I move to the next slide, we also had uh, incredibly some other wonderful things for the first time. And as I said, unfortunately, right now for the only time, that credit is fully refundable. In prior years and, and potentially moving forward, the credit is only partially uh, refundable. So this year it's fully refundable. So back to that quick example, if you have a $3,600 uh, child tax credit for your one child age 12, and you owe no taxes uh, after you complete your tax liability computation, you receive the full amount, $3,600, uh, in a refund back to you. And so the other important, important thing that I hope you'll leave this with, in prior years, you had to have earned income uh, to receive this child tax credit. That has been removed for this year. So those families who may have had no income who and, and or little income, a lot of times have heard this myth, and, and, I, and I say that reluctantly, that, that there's no need to file. And technically, if you have income in a certain income range, there is no technical reason to file or need to file. But if you don't file, you would miss out on a credit like this child tax credit. And we'll talk about the earned income tax credit in the, in the same way. Both of those credits must be claimed by you. We are unfortunately not going to come out to you and say, we think you missed it. You're going to have to file a return. So if you take anything from this, I will hope you'll think about that in, in not only this year, but in all future years to think to file a tax return because there might be some of these uh, refundable credits that you might be entitled to, even though you have no tax liability. So again, if you'll take that home with you, I will consider this full uh, hour with you a, a great success. So I'll go on to the next slide. And I wanna to talk to you about another wonderful credit, the earned income tax credit. I, and I know uh, we didn't specifically poll on this, but I hope many of you have heard about this. It's another wonderful credit. Uh, it's been around probably almost 50 years since the early 1970s now. It's, it's a wonderful credit that helps uh, families and children uh, climb their way out of uh, poverty each and every year. And it's an important, uh, important credit. Uh, in addition, all the time, most people think about the earned income tax credit for those families with, with children, but there is also a smaller amount of an earned income tax credit uh, for those who do not have children and fit between age categories. So again, if you're only thinking I'm a single taxpayer or you're working with somebody who's a single taxpayer, makes ten dollars or $11,000, and you say you have no tax liability, but you don't need to file, they may very well be entitled to something like the earned income tax credit. So again, I'll hope you'll look at that uh, and consider that as you move forward. Now, as I mentioned in the onset, I wanted to talk to you about where there are sp specific provisions that are important to persons with disability. And right here in the earned income tax credit, and then of course, I don't have time, we could spend hours talking about how to qualify for it. Really just wanna make you aware of it. But in this case, um, the age limit for a qualifying child is waived uh, if the child in question is permanently and totally disabled uh, within the definition of for tax purposes. So a wonderful opportunity for a family with a child who's disabled over the age of 17, they still might be entitled to the earned income tax credit. So let me go to the next slide and we'll talk a little bit here about uh, those some of those basic requirements I talked about. Uh, the income generally is below 57,000 to qualify. 21,000 is usually the cap if you have no children. Uh, taxpayers will need a valid social security number. And then as you see here for, for the children, for those with no, uh, with no children, the qualifying ages are between 25 and 64 uh, in the normal tax year. So let me go to the next slide. And again, we'll talk about tax year 2021, which I think you're probably getting by now noticing it's a big tax year. Uh, some incredibly wonderful 
opportunities provided by Congress over this year. And again, here's another place uh, where for this year only right now, the uh, some wonderful updates. First is for those taxpayers that we had for that have no qualifying child. As you see there in the, the paren, the credit was usually a, a small amount, but of course, I think anybody would take $538. But in this year, it's up to $1,502 is the maximum somebody could get, an almost three-time uh, increase. We also are providing taxpayers the opportunity to use a different year, 2019, the first the year before uh, the pandemic started, to determine if that earned income allows them to get a higher credit. In some cases, it does. And then, as, as I talked about, in the old time, the the age limit to start was 25, but in this year it is down to 19, and they just have not cannot be a student, so it can't be a a, a college student. But if there's a a 19 year old working uh, on their own and uh, have earned income, they will be entitled to this earned income tax credit. And then uh, additionally, not only do we uh, have a change in the bottom age category, but we also had a change in the upper age category, and that was just totally removed, uh, which is another for wonderful opportunity for, for individuals above uh, 65, maybe some grandparents raising children, a wonderful opportunity. So again, something that I hope you'll take a look at in more detail after this session. So we'll go on to the next slide. And I wanted to do one more tax credit that I think, again, is incredibly important uh, and provides an opportunity for individuals to decrease their tax liability. And as you'll see on one of the slides, an ability to get money back. But this is a credit for taxpayers who pay someone to care for their child in order to work or to look for work. And of course, as I've mentioned a couple of times already, taxes are not easy and there's a way you have to calculate it based on uh, the taxpayer's earned income and the percentage of expenses, but we don't wanna dig too far into the weeds today. And generally uh, to be eligible for this uh, child and dependent care credit, the eligible child you're claiming must be under the age of 13 to qualify. But again, as I wanted to highlight, when we're talking about a, a child with a disability or even a spouse, I should say, as you see there in the parentheses, the age exception uh, is removed if the individual in, in question is incapable of self-care and lives with the taxpayer for more than half a year and there's no age limit. And I know some of these definitions of, of a person with disability are, are not very specific, and that's unfortunate within the tax code, but we'll work through those uh, as we go forward. So let me go on to the next slide and show you what um, some general requirements on the on uh, this child and dependent care credit there, as you see, must have earned income back to the wages and earnings from your business, must have paid expense for uh, that qualifying individual uh, in order for the taxpayer to work or actively look for work, and again, as you've seen in other credits, they must live in the United States for half a year. But as we jump to the next slide, again, you'll see tax year 2021, uh, the year of major updates and updates for those working families and individuals that I hope you're taking advantage of. And for this year, the maximum credit percentage, and I, I told you there were uh, some calculations that would be qual uh, required, uh, jump from 35 to 50%. Again, that's a nice number, uh, a big increase. And then the qualified expenses that you're able to take those amounts jump from, uh, I believe, 2,000, I apologize, I don't have the number right in front of me, to 4,000 for one child and 8,000. So um, like I'm sure many of you are math people at heart, you're starting to look at some computations there. You know, 50% of $8,000 is another $4,000. And there again, it's a fully refundable credit. So I'm, I'm, I'm probably like you, if I was catching along, I might be taking a notepad and going, you know, I could get 4,000 in the child dependent care. I could get 3,000 for a child credit, child tax credit and a couple thousand potentially uh, for the earned income tax. Folks, we're talking about 
somebody who fits these criteria that hasn't filed, they may be looking upwards of easily $10,000 in refundable tax credit. So a wonderful opportunity that I hope you'll take uh, time and, and, and provide outreach to those you serve. And there, I just want to make sure we never leave that, that last bullet, must file a tax return to claim not only this credit, but the others I've talked about. So let me go to the next slide. And as we said, we're sitting here, I know on um, October 6th, uh, probably like many of you got to make sure what date it is. And many of you have already thought about April 15th, right? Many of you I'm sure have, have filed, that's great. Uh, some people file, get what they call an extension and that gives them until October 15th to file and that's coming up just around the corner. And so I wanna let you know it's not too late. We can still get the word out, we can still file. So let me give you a couple examples of what I'm talking about as you go back to your communities to spread the word. So next slide. Again, I just wanted to give you the general deadlines that you've talked, that you I'm sure most of have heard about April 15th. Uh, I think we all know that as tax day uh, for now and forever. Uh, but as I mentioned, some people get in a file and extension that gives them to October 15th to file. And some of you probably have heard discussions about some places are going to be open to around November 15th. Uh, and that is what we call the e-file deadline. That's when the IRS closes what we call our e-file services opportunity. Uh, quite frankly, we have to close it down in order to get ready for the next year. So we, we close down our e-file services from around November 15th to the middle or late of January where you can't e-file. But what I wanted to tell you is that doesn't mean you can't file. Uh, you can always file a paper return. I would prefer e-file because it's much more efficient and effective, but you always have a time to file a paper return. And then, then here's something that I hope you know, and if not, I hope you'll take uh, notice of this and, and take it back and think about it. Technically, when we talk about a refund, a taxpayer has three years, three years from the due date of that return to claim a credit. So when we're talking about this 2021 tax year, this magical tax year with these wonderful uh, refundable credits, that return is due on April 15th of 2022. And so in order to claim a refund by statute, that just means a taxpayer has to file by April 15th, 2025. So again, it's not too late. And when we talk about filing past April 15th, while we usually tell people that's the deadline and it is the deadline, and where it becomes significant is if you owe taxes, if you owe us money, you had a thousand dollar tax liability and you didn't pay it and you owe us a thousand dollars. If you don't file by April 15th and pay by April 15th, we'll start adding penalties, failure to file, failure to pay. But when you're talking about somebody who is due a refund, they obviously don't have anything for us to penalize. They don't owe anything and they have no tax liability to penalize. So I am not advocating <laughs> uh, for anybody to wait. I'm just telling you there is time. So again, three years to claim a refund that it is it, uh, due to a taxpayer. So let me go on to the next slide. And what you can do first and foremost as a trusted partner is, is to spread the word uh, within your communities, within your existing uh, relationships. As we said, the IRS, we try our best. We send out news releases. We even have a YouTube channel, but I bet many of you don't, uh, don't tune into that very often. So we try, but we know if this word comes from you, a trusted partner, an organization that an individual works with on a day-to-day -day or month-to-month -month basis is going to it is gonna go over so much more successfully. And so who are we worried about missing out? It's, it's people with very low income. And as I mentioned, oftentimes they're told because they have a very low income. And technically, if you have an income below about $12,000 because of the standard deduction, you will have no tax liability. And then technically you don't need to file. But as we talked about in these credits, you'd miss these wonderful credit opportunities. So 
We need to tell people who have historically been told you don't need to file that they need to file this year if they're entitled to any of these credits. I would also suggest to you just as a, a public service announcement that I would always tell people to file because one of the things you do by filing a return is you preclude somebody else from using your social security and filing a false return under your name. Once a, social, once a return is filed under your social security number for that year, nobody else can do it. So a fraudster or a hacker cannot do it. So just again, a little uh, free public service announcement to you. Who else might be missing out? Certainly new parents that are not used to a uh, child tax credit or a child, in child independent care credit. And of course, last but not least, persons and families with disabilities that might not be aware of some of these exceptions we have with some of the age restrictions. So those are just a few examples of who I hope you could help us reach out to. And so then I'll go on to the next slide and talk to you a little bit about how you can help. Again, we, we talk just very simply, with whatever you can do. If there's an opportunity for post information in a place where people come and, and meet on a, a routine basis, that would be great. If there are ways, if you're sending out, uh, you know, communication efforts, newsletters, highlights, uh, blog posts, if you can provide some information in there, that would go wonderful. And I hope all of you are thinking if there's any way you can train either your colleagues or staff that you work with just to give them some basic understanding. I don't want anybody to think they have to be a tax expert. I just want you to get people to think about filing their return, and then we'll help them find the right capabilities or the right resources to help them file. So again, just a few opportunities there to do it. So as we move to our next slide, here's a couple of ways you can help. One of them is to try to get them to these free tax preparation services I talked to you about, about VITA, uh, sites, which are usually held by local community-based organizations, United Ways, community action agencies, churches, ARP, uh, tax aid, often in, in senior centers and libraries. But I do want to be candid with you. They are very uh, almost exclusively available prior to April 15th. And so I know that gives our folks a problem right now. But there are right now some wonderful online uh, services available, including the IRS free file that you can find on irs.gov. Uh, we all partner with a wonderful group that runs My Free Taxes, uh, done by the United Way uh, of America, a, a free do-it-yourself do option. And then uh, Code for America, a wonderful partner of ours, also operates a free do-it-yourself platform called Get Your Refund. And all three of these are going to be available through that November 15th e-file deadline this year. So again, these are opportunities if you can steer folks towards those. And then I'll move on to the next slide. And I just wanted to give you a couple of resources that, have, that hopefully will provide you some uh, ability to share information. I wanted to obviously focus on uh, persons with disabilities. So there's some accessible forms, some ACL, a, ASL videos, uh, disability related products, and then a general uh, publication on information for persons with disabilities. So Michael, I'll, I'll stop there. I know that was a lot of information. I thank you all for, for being willing to listen and uh, participate. And Michael, I'll turn it back to you for comments and then Happy to take questions. Great, thank you, Don. Thank you for sharing this great information. We do have a lot of questions, um, so we'll get to those. I do wanna share just a couple additional items um, with everyone and then we'll go right into the Q&A. And so if you have additional questions, please continue to send, send them in. Um, through our work with Share Our Strength, um, uh, we also, um, Code for America is also uh, a partner, and they have put together a website called getctc.org. Um, on the screen is a unique URL that you can share with your network, getctc.org slash NDI. And this is a simplified filing tool for child tax credit and for the third stimulus payment. Um, the best, this option, uh, getctc.org, 
is for um, individuals who have um, are low income with no filing requirement. And it is available in English and Spanish. Um, it's mobile and user friendly. Also, uh, many clients can finish in less than 15 minutes. Um, and um, this is available through November 15th. Um, so we wanted to make sure that you also had this particular resource. Next slide, please. Other thing is that if you're in a disability organization or self-advocate group or, or whomever participating, um, <clears throat> Get CTC has a lot of additional great outreach materials as well. Um, you probably have seen some of them through NDI social media and through our website, um, but provide you information and help to, to spread the word. Um, an example that I gave, um, why this is so important about the Get CTC outreach, um, the child tax credit outreach um, to the disability community, is we found that a large number of individuals with disabilities and families who have families have not claimed it the child tax credit because they were afraid that it would impact their eligibility for public benefits. Or they said, I have no filing requirement, so I miss out. We have one organization that we're working with, just one organization, um, and more stories will be coming about, but this is, this is why this is so important. As they went to promote the child tax credit within their organization to the individuals and the family members that use their services, they found that 42% of the, of the individuals who have families um, and these are individuals with disabilities who have children, 42% had not filed a tax return or claimed the child tax credit when they met the eligibility requirements. The average was two to three children um, of the 42%. Um, so looking at a refund of about 9,600. So it is very important, and this is our time to really get this message out to the disability um, community about this important tax credit. So if you think of that's just one organization that had 42% of the individuals were eligible because they had children, 42%. Imagine if we're out there speaking to 200 disability organizations to assure that those families are aware and have filed for um, the child tax credit. Um, because like I said, in the past, what we know through our work, they may not have been eligible or thought they were eligible because of the income requirement or not, not paying the, or not having to file a tax return. So we have less than six weeks to go and we need your help. Um, please um, uh, share this information and go to the outreach toolkit um, that um, is listed here as, as well. And we'll also, um, Kish put the link in the, the chat box as well. Um, next slide, please. Um, just a few additional resources to share with you before we go into the Q&A. Please check out the National Disability Institute's tax website. Um, we'll put the, the hyperlink is here, um, but uh, you'll find a lot of valuable tools and resources, and you want to make sure to go to this tax site regularly um, to get updates um, on the child tax credit, the earned income tax credit, and other um, uh, favorable tax credits and uh, free tax preparation services for individuals and family members with disabilities, and also the child tax credit outreach toolkit. Um, so please be sure to check that out as well. Um, with that, we're, we are going to skip our last polling question and we're going to go right into Q&A um, with that. And so in our last uh, about 10 minutes here, um, we'll get through as many questions as we can. Uh, if you have other questions, please feel free to put them in the, the chat box. All right, Don, so let's get started here. Um, the first question is, um, what if I did not take the child tax credit in the years past? Can I do a retroactive on the child tax credit? Yes, you can. That's a, that's a great question. And that goes back to that discussion I had about the three-year uh, statute of limitations. So, um, you know, you just do the math on whatever year you didn't claim it. So, for example, um, if you didn't claim 
uh, the credit in 2020, which was due um, April 15th of 2021, you still have to 24. So you can do the math. You can go back to 19. I'm trying to do the math quickly. Um, you, you've just missed 18, but we what you do is file an amended return. Great. The other question is, what is an example of a non-refundable tax credit? Boy, they're really they're really double checking with you. Yeah. <laughs> Done. Uh, well, so what is an example if you can well, them an I, example? I, I, I'll I won't be I won't be snarky and say um, in every other year it would be the child tax credit and the child independent care credit because generally they are not fully refundable. But I mean, there's all kinds of credits that aren't that we have energy tax credits that that generally are are not what we call refundable. It's it's more the exception to be fully refundable uh, when you come to credit. So um, I think we just leave it there. Great. <clears throat> um, this is a question that we get quite often. Um, will the tax refund impact my benefits that are needs-based or have a resource limit attached to them? I was going to let you answer that one, Michael. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a really great question. And I really appreciate the person who, who asked that question. So one of the big myths, as I mentioned earlier, too, is that oftentimes individuals who are receiving a needs-based benefit like supplemental security income, um, which is a needs-based benefit and has a resource limit attached to it of $2,000, so oftentimes individuals think if I um, am allowed a tax refund, that that money will then impact my $2,000 resource limit if I go over. But um, when an individual receives a tax refund is an individual has 12 months to spend that money down, that tax refund down before it would impact their eligibility for benefits. That is a really important piece to, to know. And on our website, when you go to the tax pages, you will see um, various resources and tools, as well as, as things that take you directly to the Social Security Administration's website to be able to, to look at that. So um, really important question, um, but you do have 12 months to spend um, your tax refund down. So great. Um, okay, so the next question is, what if I owe taxes in the past and get a refund from the child tax credit for 2021? Will the taxes I owe from past year decrease? Yes, they will. That, we would call that an offset. I know that doesn't seem as wonderful as getting money back, but I don't know about you, but I would really never want to owe the money to the IRS. So I would think anything you can do to lower that money uh, that you owe would be beneficial. So yes, please don't not file because you owe the IRS money. Hopefully it'll it'll be enough that it will offset all that you owe uh, and then you can get the remainder back. But yes, um, it will offset any taxes you owe as well any any tax refund. Great, perfect. Lots of questions here, so this is great. Um, the next question is, will the age limit for EITC go back to 50, <laughs> go back to 65 age cap or is it set? No, uh, unfortunately, all of those wonderful opportunities I talked about today within the child tax credit, the, it, the expansion from two to 3,000 and 3,600, the changing of the ages from, uh, 25 to 64 to 19 with no upper age limit, unfortunately, as we stand today, uh, will not be available after this tax year. They were only in the legislation for one year, 2021. That's not to say more legislation won't come out, but at this point in time, none has been passed. Everyone, even though I've been dealing with taxes um, for years, I've learned something new today as well. So that's really great. So the EITC age limit, so whoever asked that question, thank you so much because I learned something new that um, in the next filing season, 
for the 2022, when we file 2022 taxes, right. the age limit will go back to what it was previously Correct. for the earned income tax credit. Okay, thanks for that clarification, Don. Okay, great. Okay, um, this is a really good question. Um, this question is, how is incapable of self-care defined? <sighs> My child is 32 with autism, lives at home, works part-time with support. Does that qualify? Michael, that's... This was, I think, regarding the child and dependent yeah, so care. That's, that's the $64,000 question. And, and unfortunately, I, and I, I know this is going to sound like a tremendous cop-out, but I cannot give you tax advice on that. Um, I, and, and you can't rely on what I would say in that individual circumstance, because I cannot uh, provide individual determinations on an individual child. You'll have to, unfortunately, uh, look at the tax code. Uh, if you have a tax preparer uh, or even go to one of our sites, they'll help you make that determination. But as an IRS employee, I cannot comment on an individual determination. Okay. Great. And um, for the person who asked that, we will put that um, a link um, to that as well. So thank you, Don, um, to the website with that specific information so that you all can identify that. That's great. Um, okay. The next question is, can you claim both the child tax credit and the child independent care tax credit if child with disability is under age 17? I uh, guess yeah. the question really is, yeah, meet yes. all the other requirements, yeah. Right, right. It, I, I guess maybe maybe this is how this person was thinking. All, all three of those credits that I talked about today, the child tax credit, the earned income tax credit and the child and dependent care credit, you could claim theoretically for the same child. And, and yes, you, you stack them on top of one each other. And that was sort of my example of saying that's how somebody could easily walk out of a, getting their taxes done of having a, a refund in excess of $10,000. So yes, it's not a pick or choose. You don't pick which one's better. If you're entitled to each one and it could be for the same child, yes you're entitled to all three of them if you qualify. Great. Um, the next question is, if you have already filed your 2021 tax return, can we get these credits? Yes. So that goes back to our first question. You, you, If you yeah. filed a tax return and did not claim one or all of these, um, yes, you can file what we call an amended return. Um, and and now claim those credits. And again, I don't want to I don't want to give you false timeframes, but you have three years to do that. But I, you know, if you're entitled to more money, I'd do it sooner than later. But yes, can always amend your tax return within the three year statute of limitations. And so there's a follow up question to that too. So when you get the credits, will you get the credits from 2021 when you file your 2022 return, or do you need to file an amended 2021 return? Right, right. You have to file an amended 2021 return. You can't. You cannot claim it. Um, you cannot claim it on a 2022 return. That that's going to be totally different tax law. So no. You'll have to go back and, and amend. And I think from one of those other questions, if you didn't do it right on the 2020 or the 2019 uh, returns, you can amend those too. But no, you can't just say next year, I, I made a mistake in 2021. Let's make it up here in one place. No, that's unfortunately not the way the IRS works. You have to do each year separately. Yeah. And you know what else I think? I think you do a very good job in explaining this too, but I think maybe where some of the confusion is coming with this one too is, you know, right now we're in 2022. So Correct. in 2022, we filed our 2021 return. Right. Our, our, you know, so I think that's also where um, folks, you got to keep that in mind that when we say um, that the tax year or, you know, it's, Yes. the previous year that we're we're filing um that we're in we're, we're, right. well said michael so 
So just simply, we, we talk about tax years and filing years or filing seasons. So that's the distinction, tax year 21, filing season 2022, they, they combine. So next year, like you I'm, said, we'll, we'll file tax year 2022 in filing season 2023. So we're going to do a speed round because we got three minutes left and we do have a few more questions. So this question is just to clarify, October 15th is on Saturday. I thought deadline was October 17th. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't, I, I didn't look at that, but yes, any, any time it falls on the 15th falls on a weekend, it, it pushes to, to the next weekend. So I apologize. I should have looked harder. That's okay. I didn't, I couldn't answer the <laughs> to look at the calendar either but yeah so great so it definitely would always fall on the monday okay perfect thank you for answering that and then the other question is um is get your refund or get ctc that's available through november 15th i think get your refund it ended earlier this month yeah, yeah there, that there's there's some complications in that question and i, I want to do it really quickly get your refund really has two ways to file one was what we call an assisted method and that ended but the um do it yourself uh option will remain through november 15th and then michael if if i can take one more question out of this out of the the question and answer i think it's really important for this group the question was do private tax preparers who market their service to low income taxpayers have any responsibility to apply tax credit or is it up to the taxpayer to request the credit what a fabulous question. It is their responsibility, but there's no requirement that it, somebody you pay to do your taxes has any knowledge of the tax code or the tax system. And so there's oftentimes you will go to a private tax preparer and they will not do it right. So don't think by going to them, they will automatically know. They should, you know, but that, that's such a great question. Um, you you shouldn't have to tell them, but you should better darn check if they did, because they have to click the right boxes within their software to get it. Uh, they have to ask you the right questions, but they should get it, but it is not a guarantee. Um, and, and unfortunately, the paid tax preparer community is the wild, wild west in some cases, particularly those that try to service low income taxpayers and, and push high interest rate loans on them they're not really tax professionals they just make their money doing taxes so i hate to be so hard on those in that industry but there are many folks that are taking advantage of those you serve so be careful great thank you don um great and if we did not get to your question um we'll give you an email address that you can send it to we'll also um save the chat so we'll be able to um uh respond that way as well if we could go to the next slide please um we just want to remind everyone that um we do have uh, two additional webinars coming up that are going to build on this important topic and thank you all so much for your questions today on um, november 3rd we're going to talk about creating a plan to promote free tax preparation services to taxpayers with disabilities if you're interested in this we're going to be talking about how you can become a vita volunteer a vita tax preparer volunteer or how you can collaborate or partner with your local tax site so if you have um, a lot of these great questions about the tax credits, be sure to come to the next webinar because you're going to learn um, more about who you can partner with, who you can go to to get those answers. But also, if you're interested in learning about the tax law and becoming a volunteer, a uh, free tax preparation volunteer as well, you'll learn that information there. Also, December 1st, we'll talk about VITA programs, the free tax preparation programs about boosting your capacity to serve taxpayers with disabilities. Um, next slide, please. Um, if you have any additional questions, um, please feel free to send them. And at the end of the webinar, when we close out, you will get a pop-up. Um, please um, fill out the evaluation and let us know other topics you would like to have in the future, and we'd be able to, to look at putting those together for you as well. If you do have a, a question, um, I'm going to put in the chat box of an email that you can Send. And actually, um, it won't allow me to send it to everyone. So, Kish or Ashley, I wish if you could put in the ask at ndi-inc.org email address. 
um, you can send any tax questions that you have to that email address, askask at ndi-inc.org, and one of our technical assistance liaisons will, will um, review that. Um, I know we're two minutes over. I just want to say thank you to Share Our Strength uh, once again for their support of this webinar. Thank you to Don Dill um, with the Internal Revenue Service for sharing this valuable information. And I hope that um, and encourage you to continue to um, inform the community about the importance of the child tax credit and other favorable tax credits that um, individuals with disabilities and families um, are eligible for uh, more often than not, but do not claim or, or um, have not claimed um, those various tax credits. And um, as we look to build the financial wellness of all, um, favorable tax credits are really one of those items, one of those pieces that really help us move up the rungs of the economic ladder. So with that, I want to thank my colleagues, Ashley Price and, and of course, Kish Pisani um, for all of their work with this webinar. And um, I hope everybody has a great day and we will see you in November uh, for our next webinar. Have a great day.